Well, the Pope and Vladimir Putin also share an unusual bond, their distaste for shale gas fracking. His Holiness recently posed with environmental activists reportedly expressing strong concern about US oil giant Chevron exploiting shale gas in South America. More now with Ian Crane, uh, an ex-oil field executive turned campaigner who is against fracking. Um, thank you very much for coming onto the programme this afternoon. Now, you did give up a lucrative career over this. Why are you against fracking so much? Well, if we were looking at conventional oil and gas exploration, I wouldn't be sitting here talking with you. But this is the first attempt, really, in the UK to exploit unconventional gas resources from shale. And the track record in the UK is pretty dire. Out of the uh, four wells drilled and uh, fracked, uh, two of them uh, resulted in uh, seismic events in the Fylde Peninsula. And although a moratorium was put on two and a half years ago, that moratorium was lifted uh, one year ago uh, by uh, Lord John Brown, who uh, advises David Cameron on the uh, British uh, Cabinet. But Lord John Brown is also chairman of Quadrilla, one of the companies that has a very heavy uh, interest in this operation. But our real concern is that this is a technology that uh, basically has been proven not to work as the oil industry claims and it has resulted in contamination, irrefutable evidence of contamination of water, soil and the air and also uh, significant negative health impacts on the population that live above the gas fields. Uh, just picking up on that, I mean, the Pope has reportedly um, said that he believes that fracking exploits the poor and their land, but there is a very strong economic argument, isn't there? I mean, after all, these people will be compensated, won't they? I don't think it really matters what the economic argument is if the water supply is put at risk. You know, what are people going to prefer to have? Uh, cheap gas, which I don't think is going to happen anyway, or fresh water? Because the reality is that if people do not have access to fresh water, then effectively life as we know it is over. And of course, this unfortunately goes right along with the uh, philosophy of P Peter Brabeck, the chief executive of Nestle, who eight years ago recorded an interview in which he stated that, in his opinion, uh, uh, it should not be regarded as a human right for people to have access to fresh water. And, and this is potentially creating a situation where basically people would have to effectively buy their fresh water from the corporations. So, you know, this uh, industry has never before been unleashed be beneath a densely populated island such as the UK. And, you know, we've seen the effects in places like Colorado and Pennsylvania uh, and uh, southern Queensland in Australia. Well, the population density of the UK is 20 times that of Colorado and 100 times that of southern Queensland. And I would simply implore that people do a bit of research for themselves and they look at the damage and the contamination that has been wreaked in these locations around the world. And basically, we are doing everything we possibly can to ensure that this does not happen in the UK. Oh, but why can't I expect the government to do that research for me? Why won't they protect my own health, do you think? Well, now, that's a very, very good question. And in fact, uh, last Thursday evening, I attended a public meeting with iGas Energy, which is the company that uh, has the license to exploit the resources in Manchester, which is where I'm speaking to you from right now. And uh, their direct response to that question was that it is not their responsibility to investigate the environmental damage or the negative health impacts that this industry has caused elsewhere. Now, you know, this is, is totally irresponsible and uh, uh, tragically what it reflects is the fact that we are dealing with a cowboy industry that is driven by greed and, and little else. And in fact, that takes the, uh, the mantra directly from Lord John Brown, the former chairman and chief executive of uh, BP, who basically said, you know, this is profit above all else and he will do whatever it takes to get Britain at the heart of the shale gas industry. And uh, basically, there are an increasing number of people around the UK, many converging on Barton Moss in Manchester as we speak, to ensure that this doesn't happen. The British government and the shale gas industry, the embryonic shale gas industry in the UK, does not have the social licence to proceed with this. OK, we do have to leave it there. Thank you very much, though, for your thoughts. That's Ian Crane, an ex-oilfield executive and our campaigner against fracking. Thank you.